So the big question is this. How can runners like you, who are running in pain and discomfort, fix, heal, and get to the real reason you're in pain? So you can enjoy your passion for running. That is the question. And on the hashtag Run Pain Free podcast, your host, sports biomechanics, athletic injury correction, and conditioning expert, Jessica Marie Rose Leggio, gives you the answers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Run Pain Free podcast. I am your host, Jessica Marie Rose Leggio. We have a lot to go in today. I'm backed up with my podcast in my brain, so I have a lot to go off on. So today we're going to go over how social media has ruined running. That is the overarching idea. And I'm also going to do a new updated injury analysis on shin splints. So we're going to cover a lot of stuff today. So pull up your seat. Know that we are visual now. So if you're listening to us on all of our regular streams, of podcast, thank you, but we are also visual, so come on over to YouTube and find us over there. So let's get right into it. So why am I talking about how social media ruined running? Well, so we all know social media ruined a lot of things, <laughs> but fitness really burst open social media 10, 12 years ago. Fitness was what everybody was posting about. It was a huge, huge surge on social media when it came to like weight loss results and how, how to lose weight and beginning um, before and afters and really just busted right wide open. And we were at the forefront with that, obviously in the fitness industry back then. And so where it was starting to, it was started out in a positive way and very motivational way. Fast forward 10, 12 years later, it is the complete opposite. There is a lot of know-it-alls that know nothing. There's a lot of people talking about my social media. Now they have a microphone. People are getting hurt from this. People are getting low, low confidence. People are feeling worse about themselves. And there's a whole surplus with that. But when we get into very specifics, we talk about injuries and the specifics of a specific sport like running. You really don't see what you see online when it comes to running for any other sport. You don't see it for football. You don't see it for basketball. You don't see it for tennis. You don't see it for golf. You don't see it for any other sport like you see it for running. There is a immeasurable amount of people on social media talking about running like they breathe, sleep, and eat it all day long, and they don't. They have full-fledged other jobs. They have a whole career doing something else. They have other hobbies. They do other things, and they happen to love running. And so I'm over it, and that's where I'm coming from today. I'm coming from that place. I speak I speak from a place of my peers that we talk about these things. Other people that are in different professional realms also have gripes about their industry getting hit like this as well in social media. And I'm over it. So I'm going to talk directly to that because there is a high level of risk and a high level of injuring people when when others are talking about it in a way with zero education, uh, zero knowledge about what they're talking about, just because they read somebody else's information or talked to somebody else about their skill set, they, they absorb it and take it on as if it's theirs. And it just creates this whole world of what I call know nothings at all with microphones. And so that's what we're going off of today. So let's get into it. Where am I coming from with this? Well, like I said, way, way, way back in the day, we were on social media 2007 2000 way but way before like so uh, instagram and there wasn't even no instagram back then and so in like 2000 and 9, 10, again, it was still positive and still people were really starting to get onto it and do all these things and like open up and joining different groups or what have you. And it was really positive. And so I would actually go online and I would spend about four hours a day at Dunkin' Donuts. I'd pick a different Dunkin' Donuts in New York City every day. And I would spend about four hours a day at different moments of the day sitting down, cumulatively four hours, sitting down and answering questions, just offering expert advice to private groups. People would tag me that knew of me. My training peers would tag me into certain things. People that I had worked with would tag me. And then I would just scroll and answer questions that I would see people asking, hey, what about this? Or I did this to myself. What's this, you know, what am I, what's this pain? And it was very well received. It was very, it was very helpful. People were thankful for it. They appreciated my help. And we also gave a lot of free events in and around the boroughs of New York City. So we would actually, I'm going to pull up some actual proof of this. These are actual screenshots from Facebook way back 
about uh, years ago. And these are just people commenting on me and our social media, our social events that we used to do live. So I used to do the live injury events in a major sneaker store chain in New York City, and we used to do all their injury events. And it was standing room only. We have hundreds of people show up to there, to our outdoor events and parks. And it was all to just educate the masses and help people on a big scale about actual insight and real education when it comes to biomechanics, the sport of running, and injuries. And it was very well received, and everybody would come and be thankful and ask questions, and it was talked about. And that's what these these are people are commenting, saying these, these you know, thank you, I'm so happy I came. And I want to go, but I'm going to go back and really quick. Phyllis right there, she talks about how she didn't even want to go, and she wound up going and was very thankful she went. She wound up getting a console. I'm going to talk about Phyllis throughout this entire process because she kind of fits through the whole thing. But... <clears throat> She uh, she came and she actually came for her consult after that and really started to get a different aspect on her body and changing her body and learning how to run differently and honoring her body. And she talks about that just from getting the information that she got from that one free injury event. And so this was just well received. Everybody was asking a lot of questions and wanting more things. And so this is what it was in the beginning. People were really talking about it. People were very thankful. This is somebody who I worked with as one of our test groups. And I worked with Beachbody as a fitness expert. And I oversee a lot of test groups. I was the manager for them and the trainer for them and the nutrition oversight for them. And this is one of them. Many of them went on to become trainers. Many of them went into fitness. And I've mentored a lot of them. This is one person who did that for Insanity the Asylum, a program that I, me and my partner worked on diligently in creation with, with Beachbody. And so we have a lot of history and a lot of, um, we have a lot of background in fitness on social media. And literally like the grandfather to that is Beachbody, not for nothing. <laughs> and so this is another person who is in who was in those test groups and then just kept kept up with me and following me after. And this was just his comment on what I gave out on social media. So it's a really important thing to read. Go ahead, I'm leaving it up so you can read it. The whole premise here is like, wow, people went online for help. That's that's what they used to get help from others in their fitness journey, in their weight loss journey, in their running journey. They went online to get help, and that's what it was there for, and it was received, and there was people who respected authority back then. People respected those of us who had extensive amounts of training, experience, work experience. I am an actual injured expert, so I came from that aspect as well. And I've developed these programs that were very revered worldwide, not just, you know, not just on the, and on, worldwide. These were very big programs. And so there were a lot of people who were just constantly online asking for help. And Run Pain Free has always delivered in that aspect. So now we have trainers. This is another trainer. This is a person who boxed. He was a boxing trainer and hurt his shoulder. And so I worked with him alongside him at a training gym and I helped him. I've worked with a lot of master trainers. I've worked with a lot of fitness professionals, pros, semi-pros, because there is a level of respect for experience. <laughs> and we all do different things and we all have different levels of education that we've all gone through, but we respect that. And somewhere along the lines, it started to get real muddy. And it's amazing that I can show certain people, you know, who have real experience and who are master trainers and have been in the industry for years, even longer than me, some of them, who really do talk about how much I've helped them over the years. And it's all been through social media. There was much, maybe a little bit of Skype. There wasn't much, there was no video conferencing or anything like that back then. There was no Zoom. There was none of that. And again, Instagram didn't even exist yet at the point of any of these things that I'm showing you. And I've got a couple of pages of these. So these were just People, again, feeling super happy that they had somewhere to go, like Facebook, to get help. And so then we come across something. Let's give an example. And I'm going to use shin splints because I'm going to use it as an updated aspect to my injury analysis today, which you'll always find in these, uh, in these podcasts. So this is a person who I've worked with and then who sh thanks me publicly for showing them how to actually address themselves, which is what we pride ourselves on here at Run Pain Free is teaching people not only how they got injured, but how, what their body is saying to them in 
in respect to that injury or that pain and how to address it right away. And so this is what we were giving out when it comes to, uh, that's one of my accolades. This is what we were giving out when it comes to things like shin splints for say online. So I used to be very forthcoming and I used to be like, okay, what did you do? How did this happen? What's going on? And I'd break it down for people online and everybody could see it and therefore obviously use it. And so when we're talking about shin splints, shin splints, I have an old, very old podcast on that's in a couple of different things involving shin splints, but I talk about how they're hogwash. The reason shin splints are hogwash is because you can't have a shin splint issue without a much larger issue way up top, your spine, your hip, and your, your psoas muscle that's connecting those two things. So it's much more involved and much more complex. And so I go on a rant about how it's hogwash. So I want to explain how someone would come and say, Okay, I'm going to talk. To, um, I, Jessica, I got, I have shin splint pain. I don't know what's going on, and I would go into it. Okay, so here we go. Injury analysis. Here goes one of my many anatomy people that I use, and let's first go over what is around the shin. So I'm going to go down here. Okay, now what I want to show you is first and foremost, this is your anterior tibialis, which I'm sure all of you have heard and know of because it's one of those muscles that gets way too much airtime that has very little to do with anything that you're feeling. Okay, but everybody talks about, oh, anterior tibialis and yeah, pain there and a tear here and a strain there. None of this is relevant, even if you have an actual physical tear on this, it's not relevant because it's only result of, it's result of a dysfunction. Okay. So this is the anterior tibialis. What I want you to see is how it goes right down into your big toe. You see, I'm going to turn it sideways. You can see it goes right down into the base of that right above that joint base. Okay. Now we have the extensor digitum longus, the EDL. This is the other one. And I want to show you where it's coming from way up top underneath that kneecap. That's your kneecap. So it's coming way down and it goes all the way down and it spreads to all four of those toes. So it comes down muscle, right, over the ankle crease and then it goes into all of those little toes. You see how it goes down that sucker? And both of these muscles, and then we have this one. Uh, this is the other sneaky one, comes underneath the anterior tibialis and the EDL, and it's the extensor helicus longus. So this guy, this, these two guys, their jobs are to either flex your toes or flex your ankle, okay? I'm going to give you ex another, another visual of that, but I wanna, I'm doing this for this purpose. This right here. This is why you have shins pain. This is your sartorius muscle. This is not at your hip. This is above your hip at your iliac crest. I believe that people who come to run pain free want to be educated. They want to understand because that's who we've always dealt with. Our athletes love the education. They love to learn. That's what we give. So I'm going to speak to you in that way. That is your iliac crest. That is not your hip. If you see where the yellow starts to go into orange, if you draw a line directly out, that is your hip bone. That's how low your hip bone is. But when someone says, put your hands on your hips, you put it where that yellow begins. That is where your fingertips hit. That is not your hip. And a lot of the times people will say, oh, you have hip pain and they're pointing there and they Google hip pain and they're getting advice for their hip bone that is not where they're feeling pain nor where they're Googling about. So there becomes the beginning of how online and people who would do that now and then grab that information as law now go back onto social media and start posting that they know everything they're talking about when it's inaccurate, beyond belief inaccurate, okay? This muscle is called the sartorius. The sartorius is your second hip flexor. It is, in my opinion, the second most important muscle in the body to the psoas, which is the most important muscle in the body, biomechanically. And this muscle is attaching right at your shin right on your shin, okay? Now, if you look at the other two, they are along the shin, but the insertion is really up underneath the kneecap, you see? Right underneath the kneecap. So if the shin muscles were really something that were a problem, you, these guys inserting into the shin as acutely as the sartorius, that would make a lot more sense, but it doesn't, because it doesn't. So now, what happens is this muscle here dictates the external rotation of your hip. 
It dictates your leg flexing, like in a corner at your hip, and then also extension. And it's also getting help from other muscles, but those are the big, big jobs of that guy, most specifically the external hip rotation, duck footed. So if someone who is duck footed, when, when somebody is duck footed, like a ballet dancer, for say, or a hockey player even, they actually have the same issue, believe it or not, biomechanically, this muscle is overly extended. It doesn't have the ability to close. And so the muscle that are supposed to close and counteract are also off. And so there's a joint function saying, hey, I'm not going to do that today. So none of these signals happen and none of that happens outwardly. Stay with me. I know you're following with me. So what happens is because this long muscle, which I call linguini, it's a long muscle and it, this is exhausted. It just kind of falls out. Well, everybody, there's other things now that have to come into play. Everybody else has to start compromising. So you get a more quad action that shouldn't be happening. And you get more lower leg action, more extensor digitum longus, more anterior tibialis, more gastrocnemus, calf one, and soleus, calf two. Let's swing around. Gastrocnemus. It looks like chicken cutlets. And then if I pull that sucker away, that's your soleus, okay? Now, the muscles of the calf are to point your foot. The two guys in the front are to flex your foot. So if these two guys are being locked up because this muscle here is actually not doing its job. Sorry, I'm not grabbing it quickly enough. Uh, let me get him back, this guy. If this guy is exhausted and it's just falling out and there's no glute muscle firing to counteract that because the glute minimus and glute medius are also com- very involved with hip function. There's no hip muscles. There's muscles that surround it and a lot of action happens when that hip fires. So a lot of muscles have to come into play for that to happen functionally and for the muscle to support the joint action of the, of the hip. If that doesn't happen, it sets up dysfunction all the way down and all the way up. Wherever your body is more vulnerable is where it's going to sit and stay, ache, give you pain, tear, or break. That's how that happens. Injuries are how your body is responding to movement. Understand that. The movement did not cause your problem. The basketball didn't do it. The running didn't do it. The trail run didn't do it. The terrain didn't do it. Your body did it. Your body is the problem. Everything else is just trying, it's responding to how your body is moving baseline. So that's the uh, the deepest misconception people have, that it's all this other stuff. It's not. It's you. So... You have to address you, but if you don't understand that and you're listening to all this noise on social media, you're not going to get that. You're going to think you need stability sneakers. Ready? So if we go down, now I'm going to show you my little, this guy. So what I'm going to show you here is, let's see, okay, anterior tibialis. See the sucker? Look at this foot movement up top, flexing the ankle. See it? Okay. Now second one, inverts the foot, ankle roll. Ankle roll. That's this muscle. This muscle is dictating your ability to invert your foot. Okay? Now, this can get complicated very quickly. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible because it's important for you to understand that you're like, you should be sitting there like, oh my God, all this is about shin splints. This is all shin splints. Yup. Yup. Yes. And now you should understand right now while you're going online and Googling shin splints should stop immediately because all of this, I haven't even gotten to how this go, has this actually coming from the root. I haven't even gotten there yet. I'm still just showing you how things function down below. I haven't even gotten there yet. So if you're feeling like that right now, that should be uh, evident why social media has such a bad space when it comes to sports, fitness, and injuries immediately. Immediately, that should be in your brain. Hold that thought. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the second one. Okay. The extensor digitum longus. Okay. Now, again, see the toes? Watch. See? Up, 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 up. Drop. That's its job, just to lift your toes up top. Okay. And then let's go to the other one. Lifting the ankle. Again, flexing the foot. So both jobs of these muscles are to come up, either the toes or the ankle. The back, guys, point. That's your gastrocnemus. Point. Point, point, point. Pointing. Like that plantar, right? And everybody's like, look at plantar. Yeah, yeah. But it's plantar's pointing. (laughs) Okay. And then 
Let's see if we got a soleus for us that we can see. Can we see a soleus? I don't think they sh this guy shows the soleus. But they both go pointing, okay? So, now I'm going to go back to this guy because where does this all come together, Coach Jess? Right here. Oh, look at this. What's that? A terrible description of the IT band, but the reason it's good for us right now is because of the insertion. Look at that insertion. Where is that, everybody? It's right at the kneecap. Correct. But specifically where? It's on the head of the fibula. Where is also right underneath that? The EDL. Uh-huh. And what's the other one? Oh. Oh, right there. Oh, so they're... Yup. They're touching. Because guess what? The IT band doesn't stop there. I, the IT band is a ribbon within a fascia system that covers our entire body. There's no beginning and there's no end. It is extremely thick and fibrous. It's like a spider web. That is the top layer of fascia because there's three layers of fascia. One on top, one in the muscles, and one around the, the organs. Okay? So this guy is actually connecting right into the fascia that's laying on top of both of these two muscles. Right? Get your fingers, put it on the outside of that right now. Put it underneath the bone that's protruding out. That's your fibula bone. Let your fingers lay there. And all I want you to do is do the muscle movement we just showed. The flexing and the pointing. Just flex and point. You will feel a whole bunch of movement underneath your fingers. Guess what that is? Push off. Push off. So guess what you don't have? Push off. Okay. So now... We don't have the ability from way up top, which is a more important system, the sensory system of the fascia system, that is saying, hey, this sartorius muscle is actually not functioning properly from way up top. More to do with the spine and also with the hip, but hip and spine, which are more important than anything. So the, this fascia system says, oh, okay, so this sucker is not working, so we have to lock up this person's knee. They can't move the knee. So if they can't hinge the knee, these muscles by a, as a byproduct of being close to that lockup also get hitched. And so that pulls up right there. And so it disallows ankle extension and flexion. And now you add to that because you Googled all of that or someone online said, get Brooks, get Hoka's, get Asics, get New Balance, get a stability sneaker because those are all stability sneakers. That's another comment for another day. Um, and so you lock that in place now. So now you have physical locking up from protection in the body is happening. And now an external factor is being placed upon your foot and saying it must be a foot issue. So you're going to lock that up also. And so you disallow any function happening from the ankle at all. Ankle is hip. They are synonymous in terms of movement. If the ankle is physically being grabbed up and locked by something and the hip itself is saying, I'm unstable, sensory system, protect me. Now it locks and now you're not going anywhere. You're compounding the issue. You're creating another issue because you're locking your foot up externally, not letting your protective system of the fascist system help you properly. And it loops at your knee and loops around and ping pongs all over town. And you think you have shin splints. Okay, this is why you should not be going on to social media in 2023 and asking any random person, what should I do for shin splints? I don't know. I don't know where that I don't know where it comes from. I don't know where any but you have one body. You get one body. There's no parts to give back. There's no refunds here. None of that happens. None of that happens. So it, it blows my mind as a person who has health issues, as a person who has severe, who's had severe injuries, and as an expert in injury and sports biomechanics and fitness and nutrition and health, that I've dedicated my life to this, that anybody would just randomly type online to the masses and say, tell me what to do to fix me, and then follow it. I can guarantee I can guarantee without not without knowing who you are right now listening to me without knowing your name that I already know you didn't know what I just told you. I already know that you know more now because you listened to the Run Pain Free podcast and you learned the actual ridiculousness that shin splints truly is and that it's just an indication of a much bigger problem that you are going to continue to band-aid, smother, shut down, listen to other people about and get real problems. 
The, what is the worst thing that could happen from a shin splint that goes, un, that goes unaddressed or smothered? A torn hip labrum, a fracture, a stress fractured hip. That, yeah, you want that? I don't think so. That's what these things lead to. And so when someone uses social media as a vehicle for help, at one point it was okay because it was people were respecting authority. But today that is not the case. Today, we have people on here thinking they're going to tell me something about what I do for a living. And what I love is that if anybody, if any one of those people came online um, themselves, had someone go into their job for an hour or two and then t- turned right around and then told them, told that person, I know your job better than you and I'm going to do it better than you, they would lose their minds. They would lose their minds. But they love to do it on social media when it comes to running because people think that just because they run, they can coach it. Just because they run, they know how to address injuries. Like run coaches don't even address injuries. It's not their job. Baseball coaches don't address injuries. It's not their job. It's the athletic trainer or the CSCS, the people who've actually studied injuries. I've gone a step further. I'm sports biomechanic, so I do all of that together. This is why I do what I do. And so... Where this was something that was very revered and people respected authority, in this day and age, nobody respects authority. I have done extensive, extensive injury workshops for private run groups, for private sports teams, for just a group of people who got together and our own. And we did it in the masses. We've had hundreds of people show up to our events way before the pandemic. And People were very helpful because they always would be like, you know, why don't everybody, why doesn't everybody have access to this information? And it's not because it's because it's not made for hobbyists. It's in essence to be mean, but people that know what what I'm doing are in professional sports. But I have to, over the years, I've actually stopped saying that so much because the more I'm in this and the longer I've been in this industry, the more I see that. Uh, there's a lot of things that aren't being addressed in professional sports and they're still doing things that I would never do to protect a person's body. And so where they have a a training staff and a training team, when there's 11 people on a, on a major team that's worth millions and millions of dollars, that is, uh, they're all injured, that's a training staff problem in my opinion. So I have to reel that in a bit. But it is, for the, for the sake of this of argument, what, what we do here is for professional athletes, is for people who literally put the work into their bodies to protect their bodies. And so that's what, that's what we do here. And we're known for that. So we have, we have done this all over the place, and that's what led us to working in Beachbody. We were put onto Beachbody to make sure nobody got injured, to oversee mechanics, to oversee movement from master trainers, <laughs> from master trainers in a Fortune 500 fitness company. So it's literally laughable that people find their way onto my page commenting nasty stuff underneath my name with letters and accolades out the wazoo. I think it's hysterical. Uh, so... There is a lot of misconceptions online. So I'm going to go back to my notes because I can go on a tangent. Okay, so how did we get to this with the vehicle? Meaning they used the, the you, everybody uses online for help. And there is a total positive side to social media. I think when someone you know, birthdays and someone feeling really down and they just get uplifted. There is a huge side of positivity on social media. It's just not as, uh, you just don't see it as much as the negativity. And also I believe certain, certain uh, avenues, if you will, certain platforms, I should say, are very specific to certain types of energies. Some are just like overarching negativity. Some could go either way. Some are very learning derived. You know, there's all these different aspects to it. But it, all in all, where there's a place for someone to talk a lot and have a microphone tends to be super negative when it comes to authority and people respecting someone like me who has dedicated their entire life to their craft, extensive study, extensive um, 85,000 hours of having injuries alone. Please go sit down somewhere. Please go sit down somewhere, okay? Because we're all over it. Now, when we take this, after all of that, and people... Again, this is again people. This is what we're going through, and people showing uh, help for the runners and the appreciation for the runners. And even Nike, even Nike tweeted and thanks to me for my support of Nike Free back in the day, because as you probably know, Nike Free is my number one suggested sneaker and has been for 
a very, very, very long time. <laughs> and there's a reason for it because of the engineering of the sneaker, not Nike, Nike free specifically. And I've been very, very specific about that since day one. And I've never gotten a free pair of sneakers. I've never gotten any, not even a pair of shoelaces. I give information for what works. You do with it what you want. I am an expert in the industry. I'm giving helpful information. Do with it what you want. We do have the power of choice also. So I'm just giving help to help people because I believe the majority of injured people are the people who do it because they love it, not because they're getting paid to. And you deserve that information to be able to do this for the rest of your life. That is what Run Pain Free is about. We are about life is a sport. And to become the athlete you truly are inside and reveal that athletic potential you have. That is is what we are here for long term not for you to just go out here and start talking your smack about that next race with the freaking hocus no one's doing that okay we're not we're not doing that we're here for the long term business we're not here for the one and done that's not what we're here for so then all of this comes to I posted this. This is an actual ad. And if you can see my face has red on it. And if you've watched anything I've done in the past two years, you probably have seen my face have have red and hard bumps looking on my face. So what happened in a few months ago, a person, a nasty dude, got saw himself getting onto this page and made a comment about my face instead of the actual information I was giving, which is about footwork and um, foot movement, functional movement of the foot and stuff like that. And it really bothered me. I do have thick skin. I pride myself on that, but I am human. And it did bother me. And I was like, you know what? People have lost their minds. I'm literally giving out a quick little webinar to help somebody connect their dots, figure out why they're in pain, maybe open their brain up to a different idea than they didn't hear before. And this dude found it an opportune time to demoralize me and make a comment about my facial appearance, my physical appearance, because that was important to this person. I'm sure his day was so better after that. I'm sure it just made his whole day, like his whole life was complete that day. I'm sure of it. But it just made me really realize like, wow, social media really is ruining running because And it was bigger than just like the little aspects of it and, uh, you know, um, making comments here and there. Because I'm open to someone being like, hey, I never heard that before. Could you explain that more? I heard this X, Y, Z. All for it. I'm here for it. I'm here to explain. I love explaining. Obviously, I'm on here doing this. I have 100 podcast episodes. I have lives all over Facebook. I've been doing this a very long time. I love to explain. I'm here for that. But when someone finds themselves to come on my page and make disgusting comments about a physical feature of mine, you have a problem. You are what's wrong with with, with social media. You are what's hurting social media and the positivity it can bring. And what running was an amazing, positive community of uplifting community. Everybody would, it's an independent sport that everybody supported everybody doing. And that's what I fell in love with running for years ago. I personally fell in love with running because it was an independent sport that everybody supported each other doing their own thing. It wasn't a team sport and it didn't matter what you did or I did for each other. It didn't matter. But and you still supported me and I still supported you. That's in my idea the essence of running. It is the essence of the support of the community, the worldwide community. Their running distance running specifically is the biggest worldwide sport on this planet, okay? And it brings people together all over the world. We have world major runners. We have people on deck to become world major runners. We are here for all of that. And so that is what the beauty is of running and stuff like those nasty comments that I'm about to show you. Uh, and uh, throughout, I'm gonna, yeah. So underneath this actual ad, this isn't even the ad that that guy made the comment on. This was a total, this was another ad with the same visual This is totally, the guy's not even on this. And the comments that are on here blew my mind. These people are on here talking about, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm giving horrible advice, false. And all of what what made me put this up here is is because all these people wanted to have have airtime and they needed to, they needed to say something negative about something they know good and well, they know nothing about. I'm going to give them their airtime to let them see how much of an idiot they are, how disrespectful they are, how disgusting they are on social media. There you go. There's your airtime. You got it now. And I want to, I want to say, um, I want to say the person right here, call me coach Mike. The only person on here that said, no, everybody, she's actually right. 
it, the running running is a business, and we've been sold on the fallacy that our feet need to be corrected by in a running shoe store and gait analysis, and they look at walking. And he's the only person in here with a coach in his name, and actually came to my defense. And I was like, this is this is the example of social media. The only person with probably any level of a qualification to say anything about running is the only positive comment on here. <laughs> But everybody else sees fit on here. I can guarantee you they all know they don't do running for a living. They don't run for money. They have another job that has nothing to do with sports, health, or fitness. And they're on here telling somebody who has literally got letters after their name, has accolades on here, is all over social media, online, with a plethora of information of who I am, what I do, and how long I've been doing it. And they all saw fit to come on here and make these nasty comments. I'll leave them up. I'll leave them all up. All, look, nonsense. And you lost me at sneaker. The day you go outside and run in Mary Jane's, Penny Loafers, or a sandal, let me know. Because until then, it's a running sneaker. It is running sneakers. These are running sneakers. I don't know where running shoes came from, but if you would love to go back and look at the actual history of the development of running sneakers, they are, they are very thin. They didn't get big until the late 90s, early 2000s, and they got thicker and thicker and thicker as they go. There is a lineage of these, of decades of, in, of engineering, of, of running sneakers. So I don't know where that came from, but as an educated person in this industry, I will never call them anything but a running sneaker. That's what they are. They are running running sneakers. They're not running shoes. Okay. And not for nothing. Please tell me where even Brooks puts down running shoe underneath the, if you go into any of the, any Hoka's, Nike's, any of them, when you look on their page and you're going to buy a sneaker, it says sneaker underneath it. It doesn't say running shoe. So also fun times here, fun times here. And I was interviewed years and years and years ago by some, by an, another a runner, um, uh, years ago. And I'm in the middle of con- 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 conversing with them about sneakers specifically. And she stopped me and said, it's interesting. You keep saying sneaker. I said, what else are they? And she laughed and she's like, well, everybody says shoe. I said, yeah, but I'm an educated person in this industry and it's a running sneaker. It's a running sneaker. I don't, I will, I have never in my life as a child, I've never conformed to following. I've never conformed to being influenced by the masses. I've never done that. And I am definitely not going to do that with the level of education I have in sports, sports and fitness, health, nutrition, body mechanics, biomechanics. I'm not doing it. I have too much education to say something like that. So by all means, if you want to get offended by what I just said, okay, but it's the truth. It is a sneaker. Okay. Okay. Just let's just go right there. But again, here we go. Lost me a sneaker. Guess what? Goodbye. Bye bye. I don't want you. I don't want you because th- 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 it doesn't make it. Why? Because then I have people like this that are like, I couldn't have run. I couldn't run a mile without pain. And I just this person ran a two oh eight half marathon just a few months into correction. Sixty two years old, by the way. Tri sport athlete. Couldn't run a mile without pain. Not only is she, not only did she run a 208, but she's actually already started helping her peers to get out of pain themselves. She's already, she's already told me about four people alone that she's actually helped with the information she has. As a person who's been doing this longer than I'm alive, right? I'm 45. She's 62. This is an honor to coach somebody who's been in the sport that long. I have runners who've been running 45 years as long as I'm alive and they're running and listening to me and they're coaches. They've been run coaches listening to me. Why? Because they want to run for life. And when you understand education and you understand where someone's coming from, what they've done through their life, you start to, you, it's called respect for authority and education. I respect greatly what these, what the people that I work with that are older than me that have been running and uh, biking. I have one person who literally, cre- who's a part of the rollout for TriSport. <laughs> like, literally, it's an honor to coach them. It's an honor to work with them, 100%. 100%. So I'm about making sure people get the information they need so they can do what they want for the rest of their lives. Who the hell are you to come on my page and talk smack about anything you know nothing about? Specifically because you don't, you know you don't know anything about what I'm saying. That's another problem. You know you don't know 
that, that what I'm saying. You know you never took anatomy and physiology. You never been a personal trainer. Never worked in a gym. Never took any uh, any certifications that would actually require you to be a personal trainer to take the certification. Anything you've done, if at all, if at all, didn't have any prereqs, any prereqs. And I lean on my training years. I'm a proud Equinox alum because you could not touch anybody on that floor if you didn't go through Equinox Fitness Training Institute, even if you had a master's in physiology. Get out of here. Get out of here. I don't know what everybody out here thinks they're doing just because you can be on social media. You can just post and say everything. On. No, shut it up. That's not how this works. Anyways, let me get on to my next thing. <laughs> so. People like Marianne, still thankful, even with the noise online, even with the noise online. And this is, these are people now who have gone through the gamut, have done everything, everybody that's made negative comments about, they've done everything. All of Run Pain Free Runners have gone through it. This is a, this is a, this is a tri-sport coach. He's a tri-sport coach. He's a swim coach. He's a swim coach. <laughs> He's a high school swim coach, okay? Like, we deal with coaches on a regular basis. We, on a regular basis and they are better for it why because then they go and they teach differently to their to who to whoever they're to whoever they're coaching the kids or the other adults whoever it is they're coaching it becomes different for them it becomes different from them babette one of our prize students she literally has learned her body in a way that she never thought she'd be able to learn and she wants to run for life her goal is to be running at 100 years old and doing the race for 100 year olds that's her goal and we're going to make sure she does that because we give the education to do it that's what we're doing here. It's not about being a know-it-all. I know what I know, but I know what I don't know. Also, by the way, um, we all have limits. We all have limits. Just because you do your taxes does not make you an accountant. Just because you te- just because you're a dancer doesn't make you a teacher. Just because you teach dance doesn't make you a choreographer. Same thing. I'm a choreographer, so I've always gone up with that. I've, biomechanics for me is since I'm three years old. Okay. So also, there's a lot of teachers, academic teachers who don't write curriculum. There's a diff- there's there's a whole sort there's a whole group of teachers that are chosen to write curriculum. <laughs> there is reasons for that. When you start looking at your own profession, maybe it'll simmer your butt down for how you're talking online to people because there are levels to education. Now, do I get annoyed when someone calls me a trainer? Yes. Why? Because it's a part of my background that I hold very true and dear to me, but I have consistently raised my bar and I've consistently studied and I've consistently um, climbed the ladder. Okay. That's why. So I'm not a trainer. I am a sports biomechanics, athletic injury, correction, and conditioning expert. And I am every part of that title. And that's why I'm never going to shorten it. If anything, I'll add to it. Okay. That's how we're going here. Well then, Jessica, calm down. Okay, we get it. Well, then why do people still believe that they should go online and and ask for questions? Because it's been a source. It has been a source of help, and I'm not denying that at all. The problem is, is that people, there is such a level of fear-mongering. There is a level of um, worry about getting injured doing everything they can to not get injured, but the noise that they're listening to that to is actually stuff that's making them worse. So a lot of this noise out here, like a stability sneaker is going to make it worse. It's going to make you worse. Tapes, sleeves, knee braces, that's all going to make it worse. That is not fixing the problem. When it comes to physical pain, you literally have two options. You either go and band-aid it and the worst band-aid on, I shouldn't say worst, the biggest band-aid rather, the biggest band-aid would be surgery. Or you fix it. That's us. There's literally two options. There's no other option. There's no gray area. You either band-aid it or you fix it. Pick one. When you pick one, you then say who you are. You're either a person who wants to band-aid it and hope for the best and maybe not, really not be running for life, or you're somebody who wants to put the work in, get through the grit, figure themselves out, learn their body, and run for life and be active for life. Because the bigger picture here, everybody, is the way to a long life is mobility. The minute you stop moving is when everything starts going downhill. Take five seconds and think about someone older than you, your parents. I cannot tell you how many people come to me because they see their parents starting to wilt. And they're like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And I feel like I have the same pain they had 10, 20 years ago, and I need to get it fixed now. I cannot tell you how many people come to us for that. So you want to stay mobile, you want to figure it out. You want to start getting surgeries, 
that's not your just it shortens your it shortens your time in being active and the less active the less life you're living and that's just what that is okay this is what we do here we are experts for a reason i'm not playing these games uh you know there i get that there's a sense of failure where people don't want to people don't want to fix themselves and then that's just going to come right back. You know, I'm gonna, it's just going to fail again. I spent so much money on everything. It's just going to fail again. I get it. I totally get it. But that's just been their experience. That's been the experience. And that is what's out there. I see it. I see it all day long. I see what's out there all the time. And I understand that. But the failure has to come. You have to start to dig into that failure. Are you really worried about it coming back or are you worried about having to do better? And I got into this aspect with Dr. Jim Taylor. He is a sports psychologist we did in our marathon training summit. He, we had an amazing conversation and a great interview. And we talk about it because when we're talking about the fear um, and from going from is what's comfortable, right? The, the big shoes and the tape and that, you know, all that, you don't know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is foreign. Most people on average, listen to my podcast and follow me for a year before they even like reach out to me because it's so new. It's when someone's like extremely injured and very, in a lot of pain and has a race coming up, they get to me faster, but if they have time to spare, they'll like listen and ingratiate themselves into the system and, and, uh, and listening to it because it is different. And I'm always going to sound different than anybody because I'm an actual expert in this. I'm not just somebody flippantly out here talking mess. Okay. Anyways, that's the difference. Um, so back to Dr. Jim, see, it's quick for me to go off on a tangent. (laughs) So he speaks about it best when we went into it about what it looks like when someone is internalizing their pain and they are fearful of fixing it a, because they've already tried everything and nothing worked or B if they fix it, they have to perform better. And so I'll let him talk about it right here in our quick snippet what they can really do to work on that. Yeah, it's, it's a great insight, um, Jessica. And, and I find it not uncommon in, in many aspects of sport. And when athletes start to gain benefit from an, from an injury, when they use it for attention, more, than, more often than not, they use it as an excuse. Mm-hmm. And I see injuries very often as coming out of uncon- the un- an unconscious drive or need to protect themselves from failure. So one thing I find that's rampant in the running world are run, a lot of runners are running away from failure. And one way to avoid failure is to, is to not have to run or to have an excuse that protects them from having to admit that maybe I'm not gonna achieve my goals or maybe I'm not that fast. Mm. And so it's, it's called self-sabotage or self-defeating behavior where, where you, you some, I've actually seen athletes actually cause themselves to get injured now they don't choose. They don't consciously decide on oh, right. get injured. Right. But they're so afraid of failure that they that that what they do leads to an injury. So overtraining is often a good sign of fear of failure. Yeah. So that's also going to bring me into who I don't want to work with. So I know I can fix anybody. I'm not worried. That's never a uh, a thought for me. Someone comes to me and, and I'm going to fix it. The only thing I need people in order to fix them is their will to do the work. I'll fix it. But when somebody doesn't want to get fixed, that is very apparent. And again, I've been doing this a long time, so I can see it faster now than I used to. And so that's someone who's nurturing an injury. And that's for me, that is a red flag. And that'd be a work for someone like Dr. Jim Taylor, not me. Uh, I'm going to fix it. So if you're nurturing an injury for whatever reason it is, whether it's because of your, you're afraid of having to now do more and run more or you need to prove yourself because now you're not injured or you're getting attention for it, which I've dealt with both sides of these. Uh, that's, that's just not something for me and I'm not going to involve myself with that. So that is something that you need to address within yourself. If you're sitting here listening to this, if you're watching this and you are injury and you're on a loop you know, first I want you to figure out what have you done to try to address it? Be honest with yourself. No one cares. Be honest with yourself. Write it down. Think about it. What have you done to try to address it? Have you really tried to address it? Do you want to address it? Like be honest with yourself about that and then dig into that. And if you're really wanting to address it, run painfreenow.com. Come on over. We're ready for you. We'll fix it. We don't stop until we do. It's what we do here. So 
But if you don't want to fix it, that's something else for you to deal with. And that's a whole different subject that I do not. Again, my limits, I'm from the neck down. I don't deal with the stuff up top. <laughs> and so, so this goes into, okay, well then if that's all the internalized part of it, well, what else? What's outside? Well, that's the next thing. Like another belief that is outside of you. Well, okay. I can get all of this stuff outside of me. And, and if, if that's not, if I get the, the shots and I get the, the, ibuprofen and I get the tape and I get the, the sneakers, you know, this is what all the pros are doing, right? So I see the KT tape on so-and-so and I see the grass thing on so-and-so. I have, I have spoken to and have relationships with so many pro runners that I see doing those exact things right now that it makes my skin crawl. I can't fault them because it's a, it, they're, they're, it's a contract. They're making money. I can't fault them for that. You know, they need to make money and they're getting sponsorships from these types of things, which then requires them to use it and do it and promote it. That's a big deal. So I get that. However, I am too morally and ethically driven in what I do for a living and in who I am as a person that I would ever, ever be a, doing something like that for the sake of for the sake of money and so that's why run pink free has started to create its own partnership with helping people help people properly and better and that's to come soon so stay tuned for that little gem i just dropped for you and but this is why we understand what's out there and all the pros are doing it what have i said to this for many 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 years and in many of my podcasts is when you are making thousands of dollars if not millions of dollars to run that 5k let me know you're not this is not your job you have a job that you have to be healthy enough to go to after the race you have a family you have to take care of you have a car you drive that you'll be able to move your feet in the pedals you have walking around you live in a city like new york city you can't be all jacked up walking around these subways i don't know where you're going so because of that you can't take the actions that professional runners or athletes period do because they have somebody like me or close to me in their back pocket fixing them and they're home laying down when you got to get up and go to work when you got to get up and go to so-and-so's recital when you have to go and help your mother do something or yet yeah, they're not doing that they're not doing that their job is to run and put their butts down they have oversized couches oversized beds look at this prof- i was i was talking about professional american football it is the extreme sport it has the most extreme injuries and the most severe life risking injuries and i always use it as how they treat their bodies they they play the least amount of all the sports and they have the highest rate of injury and the highest risk of injury and long-term life effects that's why i use it they are home laying down on off seasons unless they're in the training room unless they're with their private trainer in their off season and they're sleeping and eating their body is their job so unless you're in that pocket stop putting yourself in the same sentence and conversation of what someone else does stop it it doesn't apply to you it doesn't apply to you you have to be able to get up in the morning and not have a problem yes we want everybody to run pain-free but you know what i'm really looking for how's tomorrow How'd you feel out? How'd you feel three hours after the race? What'd you do the next day? Did you go to work? What'd you do? That's what I want to hear. How did you recover? Because the recovery tells me how the work handled you. The recovery tells me how the conditioning carried you. If you don't recover well, the work still needs to be done. That's the problem, not the race. Because how many of you out there say, I really don't feel anything when I'm running. It's after, right? That's the most common statement. I don't feel it when the only time when someone feels something running, they stop running. Now it's extreme because you, because you let it go because you weren't feeling it when you were running. You felt it after. So it didn't bother running, right? So you did everything to be able to run knowing that you'd be out for like five days and then you'd run and then wait five days. You handled that until it became a point where you couldn't do that anymore. That's when someone reaches out to us when it's gone so far. But the recovery is always the indicator of what's going on with how you're treating your body. Your training is off. If it's there at all, God knows who you're listening to or following because that's the other thing. You go out and get these random run programs. Program design is in and of itself its own certification in the world of training. It doesn't, you don't just get it because you became a trainer. You have to learn how to design a program for a client. And then you have to get up in the ranks to be even able to sport specific program a client. So it is mind boggling to me that somebody thinks that has never taken any anatomy and physiology, never taken a certified personal training course, course, 
and tested and had a practical exam that they had to actually show somebody who of authority can see what you're doing with somebody and test it and, tr- and correct it and examine it and, and, and score it. No, you haven't done any of that. No one's done that. And then they go and they get a random coach certification. They're going to program a run. Are you serious? You're going to program a cardiovascular pulmonary system activity for the duration of at minimum, at minimum three to four hours straight. And you think you're qualified to do that? Get out of here. Are you serious? Are you serious? Just think about it for a second. And that's your body. That's your body. Well, my friend doesn't train for a half. Great. Let me know how how many halves they run. Was it a one and done? Then it's not applicable because that's beginner luck. That's always going to be that. Let me know how many runs they do. Let me know how they feel in 10 years. (laughs) I'm not new to this. I know what I'm talking about. I love it. People out here posting, I don't need a training program. Good. Go away. Go away. Have fun with that. All day long, upside down. Always. Go ahead. And it's always after they feel a difference between actually having something guide them, having not guided them, and then how they just want to rock out and do what they know they can get away with with the least amount of effort. Okay? I'm, I know what that is. No one's out here doing amazing, great things and feeling great and not beating their body up with no training, with no proper training program, tra- proper strength program, proper running program, sports specific. No one's doing that. Okay? So all these external things that you see everybody else doing... You don't know everybody's business. You don't know what everybody's body is doing. You don't know what they're really doing. I always say when you think you know all of it, know that you at best know half. Okay? So, and everybody loves to post online what they want people to know. Nobody's out here posting online what they don't want anybody to know. And we all know that. But for some reason, that critical thinking factor goes away when we start reading comments and posts. Apply it. We need critical thinking back involved in social media. That's what we need here. So, you know, these are just, we, we are here for the long haul. We are here to get information out to people. We are, we, we, we help anybody. People, when we would work the races, uh, you know, any, any races we would attend, it wasn't just run pain-free people. Anybody that, I, that we saw running up, you'd have lines waiting for me to stick people and get them going. And, of course, run pain-free people would come up and give me a high five and move on because they didn't need it because they had proper conditioning and proper strength training and proper run programming design, and they were good to go. But they would come up with people and say, hey, I found this person struggling, Coach Jess. Take care of them, and they'd run away. That's a true run pain-free athlete, and that's what we're here for. We're here to help people. For, so for someone on social media to find themselves on my page questioning my authority, my background, my education, and what I've done with my life study is disgusting, egregious, and everything that's wrong with social media, specifically when it comes to running. Running is an independent sport. Let's apply some independent thought to that. And I will leave you on that note. Thank you for listening to our Run Pain-Free podcast. We are back in full motion. I have so much coming towards you. Have an amazing day. I'll talk to you soon.